Okay, the K2 is finally fixed. Welcome back to Advanced Geekery. My name is David Gewertz, and the K2 here finally works. Finally. So, this has been a long saga fixing a fairly measurable problem in print quality which turned out to be some broken parts that needed to be replaced. I did a whole video on, on the problem and where we were at, so I'm not gonna go too much into the problem except to show you what the solution was, which was um, Creality sent me a couple of these parts and I had to dig inside the machine and replace them. This program is sponsored in part by the Advanced Geekery Weekly Newsletter. Want exclusive access to my latest ZDNet articles, behind the scenes updates on my projects, and must watch YouTube videos curated just for you? How about fascinating reads from around the web and a chance to have your own projects spotlighted? It's all in the newsletter. And the best part, subscribing is absolutely free. Don't wait, click the link below to get your weekly issue and make it awesome. So, um, the result is, well, let me show you this piece in here first because the original was terrible. And as you can see, that's pretty nice. That came out pretty well. And the second test, which was the giant Benchy, came out really nice as well. So... Overall, I'm quite pleased with the result. Now, what happened was, apparently, there's a um, there's a piece in the middle here. I'll show you close-ups. But there's a piece in the middle here that broke off. This appears to be an aluminum casting. And um, the pressure on the plate cracked it. Um, I don't know if that was in shipping or that was as the plate comes down. When the plate comes down, it sometimes comes at an angle. So I don't know if that's a design flaw or whether that was a shipping problem. But I'm going to go with a shipping problem because there's a lot of people using this and this is not a commonly reported problem. Uh, Creality was nice enough to send me replacement parts and um, I took the machine apart and fixed it. Taking the machine apart and fixing it was roughly a six hour job across three or four days. So it took a couple months to get the pieces, the, the actual replacement parts. Then it took me time to find a block of time where I could use the entire workshop to do this because there's something on the order of 50 plus screws that have to be renew, removed starting at the top and working all the way down um, to be able to put this thing together. So, um, what I wound up having to do was initially uh, move the uh, bed all the way up under power and take off a bottom tray. Once, and that involved actually picking away at the front of the machine, which was unfortunate, but you had to get to the screws that were behind the coating inside the door, um, and then lifting off that bottom tray. At that point, I was able to bring the the actual um, print bed back down and I had to take off a set of screws along the top including a couple that were connected to the support posts that you really couldn't grip onto particularly easily. Um, interestingly the instructions, the video instructions that Creality provided me were wrong. So after unscrewing those things which was not particularly convenient the posts were supposed to drop down to allow you to take this part up and off of them. The problem with that was that the posts didn't drop down. So I contacted Creality and was told it turns out that they changed the design and I had to flip the machine on its side, go in and very carefully take out all the screws that were inside in a very tiny spot. It took a long time, was extremely tedious to do. Um, but did that 
then went back and took off the um, the screws that were not actually holding the bed, but had the broken pieces on the bottom that I had to undo from the screws on the bed and get the bed out of the way, lift it up in the back and, and get the bed out of the way, and then go in and remove everything that was necessary to pull off these bed lifting, these bed lifting things, um, so that uh, I could do that repair. Um, and then put it all back together. Now this is a hundred pound or so device and it's big. So I put it on the lift table and I lifted the table up and down, which helped quite a bit. I was able to get from the top and from the side and then bring it up to where I needed to reach it and, and so forth. But it was a, a very tedious process. And to be honest, if this were a smaller, less weighty machine, that wouldn't be so difficult to either dispose of or, re or return. I would have done that instead of having to do that kind of work. Um, on the plus side, it is maintainable. It is difficult. I mean, it, it was a lot of work. I didn't really need to put in a full six hours of basically surgery to put this thing together, but I did. Um, and the result is good. It works. And that's really the net 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 of this thing is after doing all of that, I was able to generate some good test prints. Now, I haven't done any of the the typical review process I do with a new printer or anything else because I've, I've just only just gotten it to the point where it works well enough to make a print that is not clearly from something broken. So that's the next step. Um, I'm going to make uh, a variety of test prints and then start doing the review process and so forth. Um, I have to say this was pretty inconvenient and I also have to say that these things, they look like they're cast. And I would have thought that maybe machined aluminum would be stronger than a casting, especially when that little center hole is can potentially be broken off, and that's what holds the whole thing together. But, you know, I mean, I'm not seeing a lot of other people reporting this particular set of problems. So, you know, maybe it was dropped in shipping or something, and that's what happened to get it this way. Um... I'm going to give Creality the benefit of the doubt. They've always been cool. They were helpful in getting this thing up and running. Um, they were patient with my many, many questions. I mean, granted, some of the questions wouldn't have been asked if their video actually matched how the machine went together. But still, they were very patient with my many questions and answered them and gave me, you know, clues on what to do. Um, one of the more amusing parts is that they showed how to remove the screws for the these bars that were supposed to fold down that weren't in the video. And they showed me a photo of how to remove the screws. And when I saw the photo, it looked great. But that was when the entire machine was disassembled prior to production. That's where you get to it. When it's assembled, getting into those screws and reaching in there was tight. But hey, it's working. Uh, I will report back to you more as I build some stuff on it. Um, the fact is, is I have an amazing Benchy. Also, just, just an interesting point. Take a look at the front of the window. That is done without supports. That is a, um, a bridge that has got to be a good three inches done without supports. In fact, this entire interior of this thing was done without supports using just standard Creality Hyper PLA. Um, that's probably the longest bridge I've seen, and it looks great. So, points to them for that. Um, and there we are. So, uh, with that, my name is David Gortz. Go out there and fix something awesome.